Okay, here we're going to investigate the domain eukarya. Provide some examples to show you how diverse this particular domain is. So starting with the basics, it appeared about 1.5 billion years ago. It contains organisms most people are familiar with. And they consist of four kingdoms below the domain. So first one is animals, plants, and fungi, and then protists. The animals, plants, and fungi are well-defined evolutionary groups in a largely multicellular. Protists are kind of their own unique unicellular and very diverse group here. So all four of these, though, are still under the domain eukarya, but our four kingdoms within that can be slightly different. So eukarya. The hallmark of eukaryotes is complex cellular organization. It's highlighted by the presence of organelles. Mitochondria and chloroplasts are the most likely entered in early eukaryotic cells through process of endosymbiosis. Remember, mitochondria descends of purple bacteria and chloroplasts from cyanobacteria. Looking at this kingdom of protists, these organisms are placed here more because of what they are not than what they are. So this is kind of the most diverse kingdom. Uh, contains all eukaryotes that are not plants animals, or fungi. There's more than 50,000 species in all. This includes unicellular as well as a few simple multicellular eukaryotes. This mode of nutrition is how some of these protists are classified. Some move around in search of food. These are heterotrophic. Some make their own food. These are called autotrophs. And some observe, absorb their own food, which are decomposers. So these terms shouldn't be that um, strange or foreign to you. But this just shows you some of the diversity that does exist within the kingdom of protists. Some examples, diatoms is a group of algae, uh, commonly um, phytoplankton, that looks very interesting. And if you look at some of these, they have very unique shapes. They're used in art a lot. Uh, they're very symmetrical in some instances, and each are very unique in this visual interest causes them to be used in a lot of posters or in a lot of other mediums. And these are diatoms, which are under the kingdom of protists. Interesting, other types of photosynthetic protists are endosymbiotic of some eukaryotic organisms. See here, this prime example. Here's our um, coral, which is an animal. And if you look inside this animal, we see there's an algae living inside it. So this is another example of kind of this endosymbiosis and how these two different organisms are coming together for a common purpose. Algae is able to capture sunlight and produce sugar from that, and the animal is able to provide protection of, of this algae. So chloroplasts and endosymbiosis, remember chloroplasts are thought to be once free-living cyanobacteria that were engulfed by a eukaryotic cell. The presence of a double membrane DNA both support this idea, well, some other features, but these are the main two. The sense that it was once free living and now incorporated into the eukaryotic cell. So, kingdom fungi. Fungi are eukaryotes and most are multicellular. Cells of fungi have cell walls that contain the material called chitin. This includes molds, mildews, mushrooms, and yeast. Chitin is also that hard outer um, shell to insects or crabs or lobsters, or shrimp, um, it's the same basic material. And they also produce some mildews, so they can be uh, have negative impacts here on these uh, grapes. And yeast, so it caused bread to rise. We did a lab on yeast, so it was an example of an organism that would be classified in the kingdom of fungi. Within this kingdom of fungi, it's interesting, is our heterotrophs and obtain their nutrients by releasing digestive enzymes into a food source. They absorb their food after it's been digested by these enzymes and broken down. Fungi act either as decomposers or as parasites in nature. This is kind of how they can look here. You may have seen them um, on bread, kind of breaking that down. Now these structures are very unique. Fungi have things called hyphae and mycelium. Mycelium are these large structures here. Vegetative part of the fungus, they're, they're composed of hyphae, and is a collection of hyphae is another way to think about it. Looks like a patch of threads or strands and function at the macro level. This would be an example of mycelium. Specifically here, this small region here would be an example of hyphae. They're fine branching filaments and they make up mycelium. 
They're the building blocks of fungi, and they look like threads or strands, and they function at the micro level. So a lot of times this would be the exact site of nutrient absorption, the mycelium would be the larger structure. So our hyphae would be these very thin, like, strand re regions. If we go back to the other slide for a moment, this would be an example here of the mycelium, would be the proper term. Here would be a hyphae. This specific region right here would be hyphae. This whole thing would be mycelium. And there's a good comparison between the two. Uh, kingdom of plants. Plants are eukaryotic, mostly multicellular, and are autotrophs because they carry out the process of photosynthesis, conversion of light energy to sugars. We're going to spend an entire lecture series on this process. It's very complex, but plants are able to perform this. You can see a very diverse kingdom here. Then our plants. Plants have cell walls that contain polysaccharide cellulose. Polysaccharide meaning many sugars, we see here. Plant cells are specialized for different functions, such as photosynthesis and transport of and support materials. Xylem and phloem, moving of water and sugars within the plant. And here's our cellulose, a very complex uh, polysaccharide composed of a long chain and branch chain, connected chain of glucose monomers or monosaccharides. This shows an example of kind of how the kingdom is organized and how flowering plants are considered more advanced than, say, your mosses or liverworts are considered very simple in their structure. Vascular tissues start at club mosses and progress to ferns. Uh, then we see seeds. We're going to spend a lot of time on uh, classification of plants. This gives you a basic introduction of gymnosperms versus angiosperms being more advanced. And again, here's our common green algal ancestor. And all of these plants are thought of to have derived from that common ancestor. The kingdom of animals. Animals are multicellular, eukaryotic, and heterotrophic. Animal cells have no cell walls. This is a major point. I try to put it in bold here. Lack a cell wall. So if there's presence of a cell wall, you can initially eliminate the classification or kingdom of animals. Some are permanently attached to surfaces, such as sponges and barnacles. This includes fish, birds, reptiles, amphibians, mammals, and also us humans. The kingdom is also includes sponges, jellyfish, worms, sea stars, and insects. Sometimes the jellyfish, or especially our coral and sponges here, are often thought of as being something else other than animals. So again, get just beyond the kind of obvious animals, all of these are animals too.